for the very latest news, for the recipe of the day, for the very latest holiday information, page the Oracle. Oracle is ITV's very own information service. Page after page of vital news and views from browning under the grill to browning under the sun, and all at the touch of a button. For the very latest information, page the Oracle. And now we can preview the series on the cover of TV Times. After the ITN News, Robert Hardy plays Churchill. Winston Churchill, the wilderness years, begins after the news. You're watching London Area's own ITV station, London Weekend Television, broadcasting from our studios on the South Bank. Now the news at 9.45. May's hunger strike, INLA won't replace the latest to die. Another IRA hunger striker's family asked doctors to save his life. South African attack on journalists' convoy, an eyewitness account from our man in Angola. And Graham Marsh takes the European Open from Ballesteros. Good evening. The Irish National Liberation Army have decided not to name a replacement for Michael Devine, the latest hunger striker to die. Devine, who was a founder member of the INLA, died two and a half weeks ago on the 60th day of his fast. The INLA announcement was delivered at an H-Block conference in the Irish Republic. They said, it is obvious now that the British government are being far more intransigent than we had first expected. But the H-Block hunger strike goes on. Provisional Sinn Féin say a new man will join the fast tomorrow morning, and that two more men will start if two who've been withdrawn for medical treatment don't rejoin. The latest of these was Lawrence McKeown, an IRA man who's been refusing food for 70 days. He's the fifth hunger striker to end his fast after the intervention of his family. He became unconscious this morning, and his mother immediately gave doctors permission to try and save his life. The Northern Ireland office isn't saying where Lawrence McKeown is tonight, but it's thought that he's now receiving treatment in Belfast Royal Victoria Hospital. And his family's intervention, coupled with a statement from the Irish National Liberation Army, has increased speculation that the hunger strike is cracking. But sources close to those taking part say that is not the case. They say that the INLA statement issued at the h Blocks conference in Dundalk clearly indicates that the decision has been taken in view of harsh reality and not because of weakness. That statement said that the INLA only had 28 prisoners in the maze, and if they kept up their ratio of one of their men for every three provisionals, then all their men would be dead within six months. So, the ratio was being reduced. But while the hunger strike supporters may be saying that there's no weakening of resolve, the intervention of yet another hunger striker's family is obviously of some concern to them. And government circles are tonight delighted that another death has been averted, and with it, further publicity for the hunger striker's cause. Hugh Owens for ITN, Belfast. The governor of New York, Mr. Hugh Carey, has attacked what he called the British government's implacability, obstinacy, and stubbornness over the hunger strike. Mr. Carey, who's visiting Dublin, said it had increased support for the IRA in the United States. In Armagh, a Roman Catholic policeman was shot by two youths as he was leaving Mass. Tonight, his condition is st said to be still critical. The off-duty constable was just getting into his car. A priest ran to his aid and gave him the last rites before he got to hospital. After an attack by a South African jet fighter on a convoy of journalists in southern Angola, South Africa has warned that people who associate with SWAPO guerrillas based there must be prepared to accept the consequences. ITN reporter John Snow was in the convoy, which was being taken on an official Angolan government trip to see the aftermath of the raids by South African troops near the border. He sent us this report half an hour ago. We had started in darkness to avoid detection from the air, but were still 30 miles out of Kahama when the sun rose. An hour later, the South African jet flew unseen out of the sun to attack. Our army convoy had stopped briefly, and only then did we hear the plane. We leapt from the vehicles and ran for cover in the surrounding bush, but too late. At least two rockets struck at the head of the convoy. The shrapnel seared into two of our army escorts. Both were seriously wounded. A BBC radio man was slightly injured in the attack. These were Angolan vehicles on an Angolan road, 80 
85 miles inside Angola. But we had crossed into a swathe of territory which South Africa dominates totally from the air. Our findings in three days of journeying in southern Angola revealed great suffering amongst the thousands of displaced people. Evidence, too, that this is a war with Angola rather than, as the South Africans claim, the Swapo guerrillas fighting for independence in Namibia. John Snow, ITN, Luanda. In Iran, Ayatollah Khomeini has told his followers that everyone should take the path of martyrdom. This was the path taken, he said, by Mr. Ali Kordosi, the public prosecutor who was assassinated by a bomb blast in his office yesterday. Thousands of Iranians shouting death to America turned out for his funeral and that of Mr. Dastgerdi, the chief of police today. They're the latest victims in a series of political assassinations in Iran. President Sadat of Egypt has said that he might take further action to stamp out religious strife after his decision yesterday to order the arrest of 1,500 religious leaders and politicians. He was asked if this meant more arrests. If need be, if need be, it is a purge. And uh, I'm not uh, eliminating the uh, opposition like uh, some of you have said. Uh, I have spoke today quite plain and quite open. I hope you had the message. The Pope has sent a message to the First National Congress of the Polish Trade Union Solidarity, comparing their struggles now with Poland's struggles in the Second World War. Speaking at his summer palace at Castel Gandolfo, he said the death of six million Poles in the war confirmed Poland's present right to its own culture and individuality. Before the second day of the Congress at Gdansk, Solidarity members said mass. A report from the leadership told him there are still forces inside Poland who wish to destroy their new freedom and even to take a path of national betrayal. This was a reference to those who might invite in the Russians who've been continuing their huge military maneuvers just over the border. Tanks have been practicing combat techniques in coordination with other branches of the Russian armed forces. The Russians say the pace and scope of the maneuvers are increasing and the main operations are yet to come. In Poland itself, 150 prisoners have broken out of the prison in Bydgoszcz and another 150 have taken over part of the jail. It's believed to be the biggest jailbreak ever in a communist bloc country. It follows the shooting of a prisoner who was trying to escape. The TUC General Secretary, Mr. Len Murray, has said that trade union membership dropped by more than half a million last year and he forecast another fall of half a million this year. Mr. Murray, speaking on the eve of the TUC Congress at Blackpool, called it the most significant decrease in our numbers since the 1920s. And he accused the government of deliberately creating unemployment to weaken the unions. It was, Mr. Murray told a news conference, a serious charge that the government had deliberately created unemployment. But he maintained it was an accurate one. Congress would be out to demonstrate that the TUC's alternative economic strategy was solid, credible and workable. But didn't the dramatic fall in union membership weaken the union movement in its dealings with the government? Well, of course, one of the attractivenesses of uh, unemployment to the present government is that it might help to weaken trade unions. If these members had gone off to some other trade union centre, and remember we only have one trade union centre in this country, unlike other countries, then I'd be worried. But of course they haven't. And the proportion of workers who are still in unions, the proportion of workers at work who are still in unions, is as high as ever, and indeed very slightly higher. So no, we are still a representative, and we are still strong. We don't just measure strength in membership, of course important. We don't just measure strength in money, of course that's important. But in the heart of the trade union movement, you'll see this week, the trade union movement is in good heart and has kept its nerve. Union delegations have been deciding today which way they'll vote on key issues. Continued opposition to any pay restraint is certain, with unions like the transport workers taking a rigid stance. But moderate union leaders feel they're still free to discuss a possible future pay pact with Labour leaders. The main sideshow at the start of Congress is whether Mr Roy Grantham of the clerical union Apex is to be banned from standing for the TUC General Council. His alleged defence is canvassing support for his candidature. If the issue isn't resolved tonight, it could lead to a serious row when Congress opens tomorrow. Michael Green, ITN, Blackpool. Manchester Labour Party has dropped 24 councillors from its list of candidates to fight the local government election next May, including the Lord Mayor and the Deputy Leader of the Council. It's seen as a victory for the left wing. 
And in the battle for the deputy leadership of the Labour Party, Mr Dennis Healy has said that his rival, Mr Tony Benn, is not as popular in the opinion polls as he is in the party. Speaking on ITV's Face the Press programme, he said this was because much of the party was controlled by members with extreme views. The party membership has declined dramatically in recent years and in many parts of the movement, in some trade unions and also in some constituency Labour parties, the majority control, which represents in any case only, say, 5% of the total Labour Party vote in the area, is in the hands of people who uh, take a very much more extreme view of issues than the average voter. But, of course, this tends to be the case in any party, particularly in opposition. People who are sufficiently dedicated to give up evenings every week, sometimes five or six evenings a week, to work for a political party, by that very fact, are not likely to be typical of the average voter who would much rather watch Crossroads or dig his garden. Australia's Graham Marsh has won the European Open Golf Championship at Royal Liverpool. He finished this afternoon with a 68, giving him a record total of 275, that's 13 under par. It was a seesaw battle with the overnight leader Seve Ballesteros, who came second, two strokes behind. As you can see, 12 under par, two strokes ahead of Ballesteros, whose ball is some 40 yards ahead of him there. Graham will want to bring this ball in from the right-hand side of the green. Has he got the bit of draw that he needs? Here it comes, just going around the bunker. Yes, absolutely perfect. Just look at this. Absolutely perfect. He tosses that one up nicely into the air. Right on line. Mm, what a shot. If this doesn't go in, Marsh drops to 12 under, and Seve Ballesteros has a chance to join him at that figure. Now, Seve Ballesteros has to make this putt to put any kind of pressure. Now, this for the championship. It's there. Graham Marsh, the fourth European Open champion with rounds of 67, 72, 68 and 68. Mrs Thatcher has been spending the weekend with a queen at Balmoral and there's mounting speculation that she will announce a cabinet reshuffle in the next few days. Mrs Thatcher joined the royal family for their Sunday visit to Crathy Church. It's always been a semi-private occasion but this year, following that wedding, it's become a major tourist attraction. Mrs. Thatcher, who spent the weekend here, didn't seem to mind. It's rumoured she spent the time briefing Her Majesty on proposed changes in the Cabinet, which may well be announced this week. She flies back to London tonight. But the royal family made it clear that this was not a public occasion. As they stepped from their cars, they scarcely acknowledged the crowd. It was only the briefest glimpse of the Princess of Wales in a fawn two-piece with matching hat. But despite the cheers, she didn't turn round to wave. It's estimated that over 12,000 people turned up and they had to wait for nearly three hours to catch a glimpse of the royal family. And it was to be only a glimpse before the limousines headed back for the privacy of Balmoral. Oh, come on, Diana, we smile. The Prince and Princess of Wales sat well back in their car. They're leaving to continue a holiday which they're determined shall be as private as possible before their new public life together begins in earnest. Ken Reese, ITN, Balmoral. Finally, naked aggression has shown that it does have a softer face in West Berlin. About 50 demonstrators attending an international squatters festival took off their clothes to show the peaceful nature of their protest. The message got through. The police, appropriately enough, turned the other cheek. That's the news tonight. Good night. Monday night on ITV, a new comedy series, Never the Twain, stars Windsor Davis and Donald Sinden. Oh, lot 27. Not really suitable for your shop, you know, that's genuine. <laughs> well, well, Peel, that's me to you. And me with an unloaded gun. At nine, murder in Texas. Farrah Fawcett loses her man to Catherine Ross.
You seem so keyed up. Have you been seeing Jack Ramsey? No, I haven't. But if I had, I wouldn't feel guilty. You're using him to pressure me into doing something about Joan. Nothing's changed. Nothing's gonna change. Clara Fawcett starts at 9, Never the Twain starts at 8, new for Monday night on ITV. Now here's the latest weather forecast for the London weekend television area. Tonight will be dry with a few mist and fog patches towards dawn. Tomorrow any fog will soon clear to give a dry but more cloudy day than recently. Nevertheless, the cloud will be thin at times, giving spells of hazy sunshine. And it will be another warm day, although not quite as warm as today, with temperatures reaching 24 degrees centigrade, 75 degrees Fahrenheit. The light southeasterly breeze will increase a little tomorrow, becoming moderate at times later. Part one of the new drama series Winston Churchill, The Wilderness Years, is next. Hello again. Well, I certainly enjoyed my first weekend with London Weekend Television, where there's been plenty of new entertainment for the whole family. And now here's another new series, Winston Churchill, The Wilderness Years. <laughs>